The Battle of Red Mountain and the Rise and Fall of the Tribunal. The following is a transcript of the words of Lord Vivek himself, who can clearly recall the events of the distant past. But you have asked me to tell you, in my own words, the events surrounding the Battle of Red Mountain, the birth of the Tribunal, and the prophecies of Narevari born. Here is what I can tell you. When the Kaima first abandoned the herds and tents of their nomadic ancestors and built the first great houses, we loved the Daedra and worshipped them as gods. But our brethren, the Dwemer, scorned the Daedra and mocked our foolish rituals and preferred instead their gods of reason and logic. So the Kaimur and Dwemer were always at bitter war, until the Nords came and invaded Rizdane. Only then did the Kaimur and Dwemer put away their strife and join together to cast out the invaders. Once the Nords were driven out, General Nerevar of the Kaimur and General Dumak of the Dwemer, who had come to love and respect one another, resolved to make peace between their peoples. In that time, I was but a junior counselor to Nerevar, and Nerevar's queen, Almalexia, and his other favorite counselor, Sotha Sil, always doubted that such a peace might long survive, given the bitter disputes between Kaimur and Dwemer. But by negotiation and compromise, Nerevar and Dumak somehow managed to preserve a fragile peace. But when Dagathur, lord of house Dagath, entrusted as a friend by both Nerevar and the Dwemer, brought us proof that high engineer Kagranak of the Dwemer had discovered the heart of Lorcan, and that he had learned how to tap its powers, and was building a new god, a mockery of Kaima faith, and a fearsome weapon, we all urged Nerevar to make war on the dwarves, and to destroy the threat to Kaima beliefs and security. Nerevar was troubled. He went to Dumak, and asked, if what Dagath Ur said was true. But Kagrinak took great offense and asked whom Nereva thought he was, that he might presume to judge the affairs of the Dwemer. Nereva was further troubled and made a pilgrimage to Halamayan, the sacred temple of Azura, and Azura confirmed that all that Dagath Ur said was indeed true and that the creation of the new god of the Dwemer should be prevented at all costs. When Nereva came back and told us what the goddess had said, we felt our judgments confirmed and again counseled him to war, chiding Nereva for his naive trust and friendship and reminding Nereva of his duty to protect the faith and security of the Kaimur against the impiety and dangerous ambitions of the Dwemer. Then Nereva went back to Vardenfell one last time, hoping that negotiations and compromise might once again preserve the peace. But this time, the friends Nereva and Duma quarreled bitterly, and as a result, the Kaimur and Dwemer went to war. The Dwemer were well defended by their fortress at Red Mountain, but Nerevar's cunning drew most of Dumak's armies out into the field and pinned them there, while Nerevar, Dagath Ur, and a small group of companions could make their way into the heart chamber by secret means. There, Nerevar, the Kaimur king, met Dumak, the dwarf king, and they both collapsed from grievous wounds and draining magics. With Dumak fallen and threatened by Dagath Ur and others, Kagranak turned his tools upon the heart, and Nerva said he saw Kagranak and all his Dwemer companions at once disappear from the world. In that instant, Dwemer everywhere disappeared without a trace, but Kagranak's tools remained, and Dagathar seized them, and he carried them to Nerevar, saying, That fool Kagranak has destroyed his own people with these things. We should destroy them right away, lest they fall into the wrong hands. But Nerevar was resolved to confer with his queen and his generals, who had foreseen that this war would come, and whose counsel he would not ignore again. I will ask the tribunal what we shall do with them, for they have had wisdom in the past, that I had not. Stay here, loyal Dagathur, until I return. So Nerevar told Dagathur to protect the tools and the heart chamber until he returned. Then Nerevar was carried to us, where we waited on the slopes of Red Mountain, and he told us all that had transpired on the Red Mountain. What Nerevar had said was that the Dwemer had used special tools to turn their people into immortals, and that the heart of Lorcan had wondrous powers. Only later did we hear from others present that Dagath Ur had thought that Dwemer destroyed, not made immortal, and no one knows for sure what really happened there. After hearing Nerva, we gave our counsel as he requested, proposing, we should preserve these tools in trust for the welfare of the Kaima people, and who knows, perhaps the Dwemer are not gone forever, but merely transported to some distant realm, from which they may some day return to threaten our security once again. Therefore, we need to keep these tools, to study them and their principles, so that we may be safe in future generations. And though Nerva voiced his grave misgivings, he was willing to be ruled by our council, under one condition, that we all together should swear a solemn oath upon Azura, 
that the tools would never be used in the profane manner that the Dwema had intended. We all readily agreed and swore solemn oaths at Nerevar's dictation. So then we went with Nerevar back into Red Mountain and met with Degas Ur. Degas Ur refused to deliver the tools to us, saying they were dangerous and we could not touch them. Degas Ur seemed to be irrational, insisting that only he could be trusted with the tools. And then we guessed that he had somehow been affected by his handling of the tools. But now I feel sure that he had privately learned the powers of the tools and had in some confused way decided he must have them for himself. Then Nerevar and our guard resorted to force to secure the tools. Somehow Degas Ur and his retainers escaped, but we gained the tools and delivered them to Sotha Sil for study and safekeeping. For some years we kept the oaths we swore to Azura with Nerevar. But during that time, in secret, Sotha Sil must have studied the tools and divined their mysteries. And at last he came to us with a vision of a new world of peace, with justice and honor for nobles, and health and prosperity for the commoners, with a tribunal as immortal patrons and guides. And dedicating ourselves to this vision of a better world, we made a pilgrimage to Red Mountain and transformed ourselves with the power of Kagranak's tools. And no sooner that we had completed our rituals and begun to discover our newfound powers, the Daedra Lord Azura appeared and cursed us for our forsworn oaths. By her powers of prophecy, she assured us that her champion, Nerevar, true to his oath, would return to punish us for our perfidy and to make sure such profane knowledge might never again be used to mock and defy the will of the gods. But Sothasil said to her, The old gods are cruel and arbitrary, and distant from the hopes and fears of Myrrh. Your age is past. We are the new gods, born of the flesh, and wise and caring for the needs of our people. Spare us your threats and chiding, in constant spirit. We are bold and fresh, and will not fear you. And then, in that moment, all Kaima were changed into Danmer, and our skin turned ashen, and our eyes into fire. Of course, we only knew at that time that this had happened to us, but Azura said, This is not my act, but your act. You have chosen your fate, and the fate of your people, and all the Danmer shall share your fate, from now to the end of time. You think yourselves gods, but you are blind, and all is darkness. And Azura left us alone in darkness, and we were all afraid, but we put on brave faces, and went forth from Red Mountain to build the new world of our dreams. And the new world we shaped was glorious and generous. And the worship of the Danma fervent and grateful. The Danma were at first afraid of their new faces, but Sotha still spoke to them, saying that it was not a curse but a blessing, a sign of their changed natures, and sign of the special favor they might enjoy as the new myrrh. No longer barbarians trembling before ghosts and spirits, but civilized myrrh, speaking directly to their immortal friends and patrons, the three faces of the tribunal. And we were all inspired by Sotha Sil's speech and vision, and took heart. And over time, we crafted the customs and institutions of all just and honorable society, and the land of this day a new millennia of peace, equity, and prosperity, unknown to other savage races.